so it's my pleasure to um, uh, invite and 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 he he, he accepted or welcome uh, Professor uh, Thomas uh, uh, Gluttonbrook, who has got an interest in all sorts of uh, medical innovation, um, but he's going to focus on the drone piece for us today, uh, and he's going to take up the first slot uh, between now and about um, uh, five two one. And then we're going to have Hubert from the uh, SAFE uh, group telling about telling us and the community about his innovation. So what I will do, Tom, if that's OK, I'm going to take away the kind of test card and I'm going to give you the screen if that's OK. So are you able to show your slides? Does that show my slides? Yep. The floor is now yours. I can't see them, but you can see my slides, Paul. Yes. We, yep, we can see them. Good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much indeed. <clears throat> I have to say I'm not quite so um, not quite so used to Teams as I am to other systems, but uh, it, it's a great pleasure to be asked to come and talk. Uh, it came out actually of working with uh, some other members of this group, uh, looking at um, the sort of use of medical drones in the United Kingdom. Uh, so my proper job is Professor of Anesthesia and Intensive Care Medicine in Birmingham, uh, and my clinical career has been largely in adult critical care. Well, I did step back from clinical work about four years ago, uh, so I missed the clinical horrors really of the pandemic. Uh, but in my parallel activity, my academic activity has been almost entirely around medical devices, a bit of in vitro diagnostics. I worked for the regulator of the MHRA part time for many years, and I'm now chair interventional procedures at NICE. And I run uh, two organisations around devices. One is government funded in the Trauma Management MedTech Cooperative, and the other was originally European funded the Medical Devices Testing and Evaluation Center. I'll come back to that a little bit later on when I just show you a little bit about what we uh, what we get up to in sort of related fields. Uh, I'm a slight fraud because my experience of using drones has been very much about talking about them. Uh, we have had a certain quite a bit of work around autonomous vehicles uh, and a certain amount of work about other types of healthcare robots. Um, but I think it's reasonable to say I've been involved in some grant applications around uh, drone technology. Uh, not many of them have been successful yet, uh, but I think things are moving quite quickly. So if I can change slides, which I think I should be able to. So I just make the point really in terms of, uh, I think one of the questions that comes out quite a lot when we talk about drones in the NHS or drones in the UK is why? You know, I mean, it's just to show you, as you well know, we are a tiny country really. You take a country like Australia that's made big use of drones for delivery. I mean, you can fit almost the whole of Europe into Australia. Uh, and so the UK is a very small, a very small country. Um, but it's not as well connected as some countries. It doesn't have the distances that other countries do, uh, but it does have the problem of traffic, it has the problem of snow, the problems of other problems. Uh, and um, so to some extent, although it's not large, it does have some issues around uh, effective drone technology. So I was making that point really, this one comes from Africa. Uh, and so the majority of the literature, and I know you've uh, very much concentrated on the use of uh, drones in healthcare uh, in uh, much larger countries and probably much less well connected than the UK. But I want to make the case really why I think the UK does have a need for this uh, and why I think in particular as the NHS moves forward and particularly tries to struggle to get out of an extraordinarily difficult position it finds itself in, uh, I think this form of technology will become more important. So the NHS is complicated, to say the least. Um, there are 10 ambulance trusts, uh, nearly 8,000 GP practices, 154 acute trusts, mental health trusts, community providers, clinical commissioning groups, independent sector organisations. So it's a wonderfully, we talk about our NHS, we talk about the one NHS, but in reality, uh, it's a mixture of a very large number of different organisations. It employs uh, nearly one and a half million people, one and a half million people, it's one of the largest employers in the world. Uh, and it has a need to move patients and staff around, particularly patients around. And the vast majority of patient transport at the moment still goes on in almost exactly the same way as it did since the invention uh, of the motor car. Uh, and indeed, we use an enormous number of uh, highly inefficient, hardly very green patient transports. And I think the sad thing is clearly this vehicle is designed to carry 10 or 15 people, but they commonly carry one. So it's not unusual to see patient transport turning up. This is not an emergency ambulance, patient transport turning up uh, with just a single, uh, a single ambulance. And so possibly not in drones, I don't think, but certainly the idea of more economical and certainly autonomous vehicles are becoming very attractive to us. And of course, we make a lot of use of road ambulances. And this, I'm sorry to say, is a picture taken fairly recently outside our hospital. Uh, and it shows just this really a dreadful queue of ambulances that is currently going on. Um, 
I think uh, people are slightly cynical. There's a suggestion that we do this to avoid the four hour wait and we don't. I mean, we try and get patients in as soon as possible. But the reality is that our emergency departments are just hopelessly overloaded. Uh, and also with all the extra provisions and PPE and so on around it has made it very difficult. Uh, so even getting to hospital, despite the fact far too many people come, uh, but getting to hospital is extremely difficult at the moment. And unfortunately, again, road ambulances, this is rare, I'm pleased to say, very rare, but it does happen. This was a fatal crash. The patient survived, but the driver didn't. Um, and so these things are, do happen, you know, and vehicles drive around on the main roads using the same lanes as you and I use, relying on their blue lights and relying on people getting out of the way. Uh, and they don't always. Uh, and so it's a hazardous form of transfer. Uh, extremely skilled drivers are not for a minute suggesting they're not, but it is a hazardous form of transfer. And we have air ambulances. Um, in fact, I'm involved in a project uh, with air ambulances at the moment. Um, they are interested, they're not part of the NHS, they're almost always owned by charities and their services are sold to the NHS. There are about two and a half thousand uh, air ambulance journeys a year in the United Kingdom. Uh, the majority of air ambulances, not all, the majority can only fly during the day. Uh, some of them now do have the ability to fly at night. They are astronomically expensive way of transporting people. They use a huge amount of fuel. Uh, they require specialist uh, landing areas, ours is on top of the car park. Um, and although they are extremely effective and have been shown to be cost effective in major instances, uh, they are not without their issues. Uh, and I said there were about two and a half thousand uh, transfers a year by uh, air ambulance. There are just over 7.2 million, 7.2 million transfers by paramedic ambulance. Uh, so the vast majority of patients in the UK uh, travel by road. But clearly, if you're being picked up in the middle of London or picked up in a field in the middle of nowhere, this is a very quick way of getting to an emergency department. So there are some suggestions around. And here, I've clearly, I appreciate we're recording this. I've obviously just pinched pictures off, off Google, but we're not selling them to anybody. Uh, and so there have been suggestions. I mean, this has just been pasted on. But there are suggestions about autonomous ambulances. Um, I'm not sure the attraction of an autonomous ambulance would really be if it had an autonomous route. So I think the concept of having routes that these vehicles would drive on, I think, is quite attractive. Um, but obviously, clearly, uh, the ability to move patients quickly and safely. I think here uh, we would probably still have a, an attendant uh, in this sort of vehicle, uh, but we wouldn't require one of those people to drive. And certainly having transferred quite a lot of very critically ill people, um, it is not an easy environment uh, to do things that are difficult in. Uh, so actually doing complex procedures inside a moving ambulance is not at all straightforward. Uh, and the driver's not there to help, he's there to drive the vehicle. So there are some suggestions around this, and I think we may well see some of these. There are suggestions about drone delivered ambulances, clearly not here in the UK. Um, but again, uh, the, you know, there are some interests and there have been some provisional designs uh, around drone delivered ambulance services uh, with, uh, without a pilot. Uh, and I'm not an expert enough to know just how much of an advantage that is. I can see for other things, but in terms of actually carrying people, it strikes me we're a little way off from that. The other thing we do in the NHS is there's a huge amount of delivery of other things other than just patients. One of the main things that gets delivered is our medicines. Uh, you know, vast, vast, vast numbers of people have prescription medicines and getting these delivered either to pharmacies or to patients' homes is a major undertaking. Uh, and Boots, I think last month, announced that it's employed another 500, 500 new drivers just for Boots uh, to do its pharmacy delivery and collection services. And there are millions of elderly people who rely very much on the fact that their medicines get delivered to them regularly rather than having to go uh, to the chemist to achieve them. And again, some of this has now moved to being posted. Um, those of you that are doing lateral flow tests in the United Kingdom know that you can, when you order them off the government, they very sensibly pack them in a package that will go through a standard letterbox. I don't know who had that great idea, but it was a very good idea because it means you don't have to be at home when your lateral flow tests get delivered. Uh, because I'm in the healthcare, still in healthcare staff, I have to do one twice a week. And, and so yes, people are having their um, prescriptions delivered for free to start to introduce the fact that if you deliver a you know, controlled drug, let's say, through the wrong letterbox, all sorts of issues around that. And so there are, uh, these are mainly used for, for low risk medicines, but they are one way that patients get their medicines. And of course, this you will know, this is a trial in London, in fact, of delivering blood and samples rapidly using a drone. Uh, London's a particular problem. Birmingham's not great. Bristol's even worse. Try driving around and delivering things is not exactly straightforward. Um, and so there have been some trials of this, and I do think that certainly in built up areas, uh, this has potentially a huge, uh, a huge amount of interest around it. The other area of uh, our particular interest has been around what's called um, first responder 
Uh, so the first responder sort of uh, uh, managing uh, acutely very ill people using technology. Uh, the automatic external defibrillator is the most common example of this. Uh, and these have been well proven to show to save lives. Um, if you have a cardiac arrest, the cardiac arrest, we don't want one at all, but if you're going to have one, uh, you want a cardiac arrest uh, with a um, uh, in ventricular fibrillation, because if you defibrillate it out of that, your chances of survival are, are not unreasonable. Um, but early defibrillation is absolutely key. And you might say, well, what about defibrillating people who aren't in ventricular fibrillation? Uh, to be honest with you, if someone's conscious, don't defibrillate them. Uh, if they're unconscious and had a cardiac arrest, it doesn't really matter. It won't have much effect on the other reasons, but it's life-saving in, uh, in ventricular fibrillation. It's a sad fact, isn't it, that a lot of them have had to be locked up. I'm afraid the ones in Birmingham have all had to be locked up. So you have to ring 999 to get the code to open the defibrillator. It does delay things. Uh, there's been some work to show it does delay things, uh, but it's better than not having one there at all. And again, another of our particular interests has been around stabbing. Uh, I'm very uh, sorry to say that knife, knife uh, crimes are rapidly on the increase again. They fell by 60% last year because of the lockdown, but they're rapidly on the increase. They're worst in London. They're, not, uh, they're pretty high in Birmingham. And there are things you can do. I mean, to be absolutely honest with you, just pressing on it uh, with a handkerchief or even just with your hand uh, is very effective. But people don't want to do that. And so there are these bleeding control kits, again, locked away. They largely contain swabs. Uh, and things to press with. And I think there's a lot of interest um, about these, but they're not universally available. And so in the middle of the countryside, you could be two or three miles away from one of these. So we did have an application in for drone delivered defibrillators. We're by no means the first people to do that. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't successful in that. Uh, and I think it was just, we hadn't really made the clinical case, but we are certainly interested in supporting that. And of course they have been used in other countries around the world. Uh, so here, clearly not a UK one, uh, but here is a working, uh, AED being delivered uh, or being attached to a drone ready for delivery. And here is a, a mock-up of somebody actually using the technology uh, to apply it to, to the patient's chest. So not particularly huge device, AEDs, uh, easily transportable by a drone uh, and could, assuming that they arrive at the right place and people understand how to use them, uh, could be absolutely life-saving. So I think there's an example of technology that needs delivering in a hurry uh, which being delivered by road uh, would not be appropriate. And the same would go for bleeding control kits. Those are the two that I can think of, possibly management of acute hypoglycemia uh, with glucagon injection. But certainly these are the two. So defibrillation and bleeding kits are probably the two that would have the most impact uh, being delivered rapidly. Just a list. So this is in the public domain. Uh, we actually, uh, we've been asked to have a look at this. So this is a young engineer who's come up with an inflatable uh, balloon that you put inside a stab wound and then apply some pressure to it. Um, so um, a clever idea. I think it needs a bit more work around it. But again, this isn't going to be the sort of thing that you have in your pocket. So if you need this sort of technology, then this is going to have to be delivered or made available very quickly to you as well. So part of an advanced stabbing a bleeding control kit. But there's a lot of interest in technology out there to try and control bleeding. I mean, the desperate tragedy of a 14 year old being stabbed in the neck in the a uh, 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 last week. I mean, absolutely appalling the 14 year old girl. Um, it, it, you can have an absolutely fatal stab wound in the neck. Of course you can, but it's also, and I have no idea, but it's possible uh, theoretically that it was a stab wound through one of the major vessels, in which case appropriately applied pressure uh, would save someone's life as long as you keep it on till you get to hospital. So there's a need for education as well as a need for technology. But of course, and now you're much more expert than I am about this, and certainly the people we've been working with, um, you know, it's not as though we have an empty airspace. It's been fairly empty the last year, but it's beginning to fill up. Uh, this was taken a little while ago, and it's a sort of impression really of, uh, of the sort of activity going on around London in terms of the airspace. The airspace around Birmingham is pretty busy. Uh, and of course, again, way outside of my um, understanding of how one would prevent this, but clearly, uh, we don't want the sort of, you know, near miss collisions. This isn't in the UK, but you will well know there were some. And so clearly we have to be aware of the fact that there are other things in the sky uh, and that drones will need to uh, to be safe, particularly if we're going to have them in large numbers. And so that's clearly one of the absolute requirements uh, is that they're going to be able to fly safely uh, from one, uh, one route to another. So just to sort of finish off really, what do I get up with? I'm run over time a little bit. What do I get up to? So we basically, we test medical devices preclinically. Uh, we have our own operating theatre intensive care unit. It looks like real neurosurgery. It's entirely fake. It's entirely made up. And we spend our time testing devices for usability. And that has included some robotics like this. We've got a robotic arm for managing patients in critical care. 
And we've also had a uh, autonomous vehicle, uh, which seems to have gone off on its own and potted off into the lift. Uh, it's in early days, but this will become an autonomous uh, porter. It's nothing like as large as this, but it will eventually become that. And that's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much indeed. Now I've got to work out how to stop sharing. Now. That's it. Which I think you've done it for me. Tom, that was absolutely fantastic. A nice, a nice summary of, of, of many of the drivers' needs that I think quite a lot of the community have been have been thinking about. So we've we've had a, some nice comments from Deirdre at Oxfordshire County Council. Um, do you, do you have any point? Do you want to discuss any of the points you raised? They're more points, really, Deirdre, than than a question. Yeah, no, I was just uh, kind of a um, great presentation. Thank you so much, Thomas. Um, I just wanted to come in because you're echoing everything that I've been kind of jumping, putting my head over the parapet about. You know, um, I think the thing is, it's so it's not for me. The, the kind of stuff you were talking about when you were talking about ambulances. Um, and, and and better planning it's you know it's it's I'm, I'm sure i'm not telling you anything that you don't already know but it's just a monumental task and it's it feels like it's it's kind of like herding cats sometimes to get people um to listen you know that it's you're not going to necessarily solve one problem of capacity but if we could just kind of look at, look at the data and even even from a workforce perspective see where people are traveling into work when they shouldn't be could they be working at a closer base um, could be could we be using mobility as a service to transport like for example with with autonomous vehicles to transport both staff um, meds, um, you know, any any kind of healthcare logistics, all in one to you know on the green agenda to keep people from 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 traveling and making unnecessary journeys. But so I I love everything you talked about, and I love the use cases that you talked about because they're. Th but that's for me, it's so ahead of the curve, the defrib and the, the the stab kits and all that kind of stuff getting delivered by drone. I'm really interested in. Um, in terms of using drones for anything healthcare to kind of get a, a viable use case that people can live with. And for me, the first step is always going to be in logistics, you know, so whether it's bloods, whether it's acute meds, whether it's drugs, what, you know, we have to kind of prove that we can do it before we move on to the next kind of um, step of really really acute care in case it fails if uh, if that makes sense but wonderful presentation thanks a lot well, no, no, no that's kind of I mean, the answer is yes it makes complete sense of course it does really uh, but i mean i suppose at the end of the day you have to demonstrate you can build a plane and fly it safely before you can have air freight uh, so i think one of the things we have to do is to demonstrate that we can you know uh, and again I, this is outside of my knowledge but that, that demonstrate you can set up drone deliveries if you like with pathways and that safely and then you then decide where they then fit but i couldn't agree with you more about logistics I mean, the, the problem we have is that we, we the NHS is a wonderful organisation, but we run it in much the same way as it was when it first started, uh, which is 70 years ago. And I think you know, we need to, if we're going to get anywhere with it, it needs a really strong look um, as to see how we do cope with the logistics. But now I agree with all of that. Thank you. I, I've got a particular, Tom, if I may ask a, ask a question. And your area of expertise is, is, is really kind of investigating, validating, proving um, sort of new innovations in the robotic side and that kind of thing. So thinking about um, the, the sort of members of the audience, if they were coming up with a new drone device, I don't know, a hand on a drone or a, a drone, a, a putting a cage around a drone, with your kind of nice and regulator hat on, what are the key points that you would be looking for if you're developing a service or trying to implement yeah, so I think, a think Yes, uh, so I think you know, the, the whole regulatory piece is quite complex, really. I mean, let us say you wanted to use it to transfer something that was, and I don't think the drone in its own right would be a device, a medical yeah. device, because it doesn't have a healthcare claim. But supposing you were to use it to transport something, and that could yeah. be a bag of blood, uh, yeah. it could be a fibrillator, it could be anything, uh, then you would have to show that it didn't interfere with the function of the device, and the device still worked just as well when it had been transferred. That might be fairly straightforward to do. I, I think more would be around the human factor interface of actually loading it getting things into it and i know again some of the discussions we've had is you know where is it going to land it's all very well saying we're going to send a sample to the queen elizabeth hospital in birmingham by drone but you know where is it going to land um and it, you know and those sort of simple things around it uh, so yes i mean i think there, there clearly is regulations i mean there's the civil aviation authority regulations around it from that side but in terms of the device and usability side i think there would a lot 
of the of the principles we use around medical device usability apply to anything actually um they're much the same um, much the same principles uh, and we're moving into that and that's one of the things we've started doing much more of yeah i mean we've run into very specific issues but but sometimes simple things like noise could be an issue as well and and secondary landing sites and that kind of thing which is always a bit of a challenge now we I, I, we've, we've opened up some floodgates which is fantastic so i think i've got zhang uh, kato or kato zhang so I, I, sometimes the, the i think it's kato zhang do you want to ask your question do you want to un, unmute kz well, not, I can, I've got it here, so I yeah, can. Yeah, okay. It just said, a quick, how, how is the NHS infrastructure ready to allow drones to be deployed? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> um, sorry, but it's not really. No, I think it, it, it's, you know, that's wrong, really. And there are clearly lots of little pockets in the NHS that will be prepared to try things. I think it's the need, I think, is to have a, a limited use case and show it. But then the important thing is to understand how it would be rolled out much more widely. And it, the answer is we don't have the infrastructure to support that. Uh, I think we will get there with that infrastructure, um, but I don't think it's ready yet. I think we need to demonstrate the use cases around that. Small well, study. That yeah. makes questions difficult. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Go on. Oh, the, the, yeah, I was just going to so, so, sort of summarise a small study done well and roll it out. Really, it is yeah, is 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 the way forward. So, David, would you like to unmute and uh, and and sort of ask your question? Hi, sure. Thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks, Thomas. Great presentation. So, David, I'm from Australia, living in in Winchester, England, but I support. Um, humanitarian aid drone operations in the global south, particularly Africa. I often say there's this issue whereby I, I provide band-aids and blood rather than moving billionaires and burritos. People say, when would you ever fly an urban air mobility? Um, is there a way that the NHS or the medical system can triage a patient to say, perhaps a hippo's bitten the patient's leg off, the patient will bleed out on the beach right now, but we have this uncertified, not the safest, transport methodology to get that patient to care how do you work out if that risk is acceptable i, mean, I, I think that i mean it's, it's the answer is it's difficult isn't it at the end of the day i think it's true to say that um we're not good at immediate life saving we're not good at there's a lot of first responder stuff that we can do uh, and there's been an Australian development actually about a device for pressing on femoral arteries um, in, in the event of, of lower limb loss. So lower limb loss from animals, I'm, I'm not an expert in hippos, but lower limb loss from sharks. Um, it produces dreadful tissue damage, so actually there's almost nothing you can press on. So compressing the femoral artery is key. That's all about education. But I think it's also true to say that if you don't get to uh, you know, the position where definitive surgery can take place quickly, you are going to die. Uh, and therefore you have to weigh up the, the balances of that. I mean, we weren't that long ago where ambulances were pretty poorly equipped in the UK as road transfer. You know, there wasn't very much in them. Uh, we're just rolling out a whole set of critical care transfer trolleys, which have a lot of equipment on them. Um, but no, I accept your point. I mean, I, you know, the optics of dropping someone off the bottom of a drone um, you know, on their way to hospital is not good, is it really? So, I, <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, you, you have to take a risk assessment, don't you? But I mean, I think um, because, of the, because of the age we live in, I think we would have to be convinced that if we were to move to a different form, particularly of aerial transport, that it was as safe as reasonably possible. Does that make sense? Um, I just don't, I, to be honest with you, I just don't think we'll get civil aviation approvals if, if, if they're going to fall out of the sky. Um, right, but absolutely, yeah. It's a very good question. <laughs> Fantastic. So I think I think we're about there, uh, Thomas. That was a really good presentation. So if I may, uh, very reluctantly, ask you to um, to turn off your camera. And can yep. I can I can I invite um, Hubert? And I think is it Lara also? Yeah. Fan oh, hi, Lara. Nice yeah. to see you. <laughs> so, oh, hi, Hubert. Right. Very yes. good. To see we have to go there, Laura and me. So we will present uh, together the, our presentation and our project. So Fantastic. I so give the voice to, to Laura. Uh, yeah. So first. Uh, do you want me to share the slides? Or that would be perfect, actually, if you, yeah. if you okay. can take control of that. OK, I will try. Normally it will be OK. And I got that Is it okay? You can see my screen? Yep, we can see it fantastically well. I'll drop off now. And... Okay, because I, I cannot see you. Um, so, um, I'm Laura Carel. I work in a SAFE cluster. I'm going to introduce SAFE 
cluster. Uh, and I will uh, give the flow to uh, to Uber just uh, just after. Uh, so I'm the innovation department manager at Safe Cluster. And so why is Safe Cluster? Because I don't know if you know, if you know, know uh, competitiveness cluster, but uh, we are uh, one of uh, competitiveness cluster in France. We are based in the south of France. Uh, we have more than 450 members and more than 60% of industrials. Uh, it's uh, split into 60% uh, of SMEs and others, academics and major groups uh, and uh, end users also. Um, so in which field uh, we operate uh, in four fields of activity, aeronautics and space, defense, security, safety and risk and environmental resilience. Uh, we have majors in uh, our cluster, such as Airbus, Safran, Thales, uh, Airbus Defense and Space, etc., etc., and also firefighters as end users and uh, police and etc. So, uh, on the security aspect, uh, it's split in eight activities domain. Uh, so we develop domains activity in our territories. Uh, in the south of France, but also at European level. Uh, we federate and animate actors around those activities domains, and we support our members in uh, their economic development. development. It's our main activity. Uh, so the eight activities domain is aeronautics and neurotic sales, because we have Airbus helicopters in, uh, uh, in our region, uh, space, airship, autonomous systems, and uh, Uber is the manager of the autonomous uh, system activity domain domains, uh, defense, uh, resilient and safe cities and territories, a security of major events, a large activity domains uh, that we are working on right now, uh, protection of sensitive infrastructure and sites. Uh, so just to, to introduce the support that we give to our members and end users is really to structure and finance innovative projects. Uh, to prepare uh, the development of innovative projects. And we have more than, it's not the, the right slide, but uh, we have more than uh, 70 uh, external experts to help, uh, to help us in, the, in this work. Uh, so we support uh, ID, to, uh, ID to industrialization and commercialization of solutions so solution through different uh, process and method methodology until uh, until the um, uh, the help to uh, to um, uh, what's the name uh, yeah to the organization of experimentation in a real condition and that's it's the uh, the focus of uh, Uber presentation after uh, the presentation of, of autonomous system activity domains Uber I let you the flow thank you Laura so. Um, um and don't I don't speak English uh, like uh, Laura so excuse, excuse me for for my English so I try to, to make the presentation a good one so um, I'm in charge I said uh, Laura uh, from uh, the activities in uh, in robotics and especially in, in drones so um a, fo a focus about this uh, activity in a, in a safe cluster so we have a club in the, in the, in the south of France, which is the, the club Sud Drones, which is a club of robotics supported by by the regions. Uh, we are more than in the Laura said we have more than uh, 450 members in in this member, about more than uh, 60 uh, works in the robotics uh, domain, especially in drones. The issues uh, for us is, uh, as, uh, is support our members to, to the market, especially the market of security, transport, uh, data report, uh, counter UAV and, and new space service. Uh, the ambition of, of, of the safe cluster is to become, uh, of course, a, a major network in, in Europe uh, and a position, a positioning like uh, a technological scout and, and business fa facilitator. So um, for, for, for this, we, we propose a, a global offer, a global offer to the, to the company developed the technology and to, uh, to uh, customer or, 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 use, or user. Uh, this global offer permits to sourcing, developing, integrating, training, testing, 
the, the solution with a, a, a network, a, a test area. We have a, a, a network. I, I, I think there is a, a specific slide on this after. Uh, we organized two uh, some uh, events uh, on specific use uh, with the uh, international partner and call for interest. So we, we have some partnership with different clusters like us in, in Europe. Uh, I think we have a partnership with uh, Denmark, um, Germany, Spain, Belgium, Bulgaria, uh, like this. And uh, so we, we work on uh, on major program. So, so this major programs um, five. So there is a program on new space and cooperative service. So we 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 have some company propose and develop a UTM solution, and we work on the regional demonstrator. We work, of course, on the counter UAV against a malicious drone. So we have we 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 have we have a, a partnership with the French government, and we organize a, a, a seminar, a specific seminar, the Safe Drone Seminar, uh, the next year in, in October 2024-22. It will be the, the, the full edition of this seminar on the Airport Avignon. We work on the, the surveillance and protection of sensitive sites and public events. Especially we worked uh, today and uh, this, 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 um, this year and the next one on the live demonstration for the, the World Rugby Championship in 2023 and uh, on Olympic Games, of course, uh, in Paris uh, 2024. Uh, another uh, subject of, uh, of working is the drone delivery, especially in on postal good deliveries and on the, the subject of uh, our workshop today, the emergency and medical product deliveries. We, we speak uh, about this uh, after. The, the last, uh, the last, uh, the last uh, subject of project is the urban air mobility, uh, with uh, some local project. I, drone delivery, especially uh, emergency and medical product delivery, for me is the is 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 linked to the urban air mobility. So just uh, just a uh, picture about about. Uh, the offer of uh, of testing, we have we we have a, a test area network, different area in south of France, about five uh, specific test area near to the sea, near to the mountain, uh, near to to the airport, where uh, companies, uh, where members of Safe can develop test, uh, as I said, their, their solution and the user or customer can uh, test to the, the solution for, 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 for to, to, to buy in the, in the future. So about the, the subject of the day, the medical use, the, the background in SAFE, uh, we, organize, we, we organize the, the first uh, the first event two days ago, which is the, the SAFE drone tech and use uh, day. It was um, a specific day uh, with some uh, conference panel and uh, network uh, with the, the community. So in, in this uh, in this uh, in this event, some uh, user as a hospital laboratories, private laboratories, uh, will present uh, uh, presented uh, their 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 <laughs> their need and then the specification uh, why they, they they want to. To, to use uh, in the future drones uh, in the transport of goods or, or sample. And uh, some uh, technical companies present some beginning of solution or, or project. And uh, it was the, the beginning of the story for us on, on this subject. Uh, this, uh, this event, uh, uh, after this event, the, the, first, the first project on, on this subject uh, began. Uh, we have a partnership with the Earth and Medical Community, which is a, 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 a cluster too, a, a cluster on the Earth and Medical, which is a Robiomed in south of France too. We work together on this uh, subject. So the first project, as I said, in, in Safe Community are starting. We, we speak about one of them uh, just uh, just after, and uh, we we are uh, working on the the second Safe Drones uh, Tech Use Day in 2022, 
uh, in Nice, in the hospital of Nice, and we will speak uh, of this uh, after in the, the next slide. So just a slide to, to, to present the, oh, excuse me, so in, in, in the program was in, in, in French, but uh, the, um, this uh, event on, uh, on uh, medical use uh, two years ago, uh, where some uh, hospitals from France, uh, Belgium and, and Switzerland uh, present their, 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 their need and their future project on the use of drones on medical use and where some companies present the first development or the first solution for the delivery of, of, of goods uh, by drone. So about the uh, one, one, one of the project uh, uh, be, uh, began in, in the safe community, which is the Casar project. So this, uh, as I said, this project uh, 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 arrived just after the, the event two years ago where the, 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 hospital, the Nice hospital present uh, some needs. And uh, uh, after this, uh, the safe cluster, in fact, organized, uh, worked with the, with, the, with the hospital to, to write the, the specification of the, of the hospital. And after, after this, we organized a sourcing of, uh, of a solution in our, uh, in our community. And uh, we we select two companies with the, with the hospital, which is uh, Atexis and the Squadron, two French uh, SMEs uh, com company. And uh, so uh, after this, we we help this uh, company to to find some funding, uh, and we uh, we found some uh, some funding in uh, French funding in the in in uh, last summer. So the the, the project. Uh, began uh, in November and uh, and it is the just the, the scope of this. So as I said, this uh, this project is driven by Atexis in partnership with Squadron and Nice Hospital. The scope is the transfer of medical sample between several establishments near uh, Nice City. In fact, uh, this establishment, no, excuse me, you can't Come back for the okay. Uh, this this um, this establishment was in the north of Nice, especially in the, perhaps you know in the uh, Roya Valley, uh, Valley of the La Roya, Roya. And uh, there is some problem uh, one years ago in this uh, in this area because there is a a, a, a big weather damage. And uh, as uh, the pictures uh, shows, the the road was broken uh, like this. So of course the, the the use of drones in this condition is uh, is better. So uh, three de deliverables for this uh, project: the drone tracking technology, uh, accuracy landing, and communication and control, uh, especially with the duplication of uh, communication uh, solution because the area is a very strong area with uh, some uh, mountain, uh, a lot of trees. It's uh, of course uh, a rural area, so the, com the communication between the drones and the ground station is very difficult. So uh, in the in the in the program, we will be we we will uh, test uh, different uh, communication technology with uh, the aim of to have uh, in final in final solution a duplication of, of of technology. So the um, as I said, the, the program uh, began last November. The, fin the final demonstration uh, uh, will be uh, in uh, one year, in, uh, in, two, 20, in 12 months, uh, and uh, the, the, the demonstration will be in, our, in a rural area, uh, of course, because today the, the regulation doesn't permit to, to make this in, in, in urban area, but the aim, the final aim, is of course the, the urban area. So the, the the aim uh, of the of the project three three uh, uh, three aims. Uh, the first is to ensure the transport of medical goods and basic necessities in the event of a disaster, of course. The second is to reduce the analysis infrastructure required to the process samples. And uh, the last was reduce the transit time, the transit time of biological samples for emergency analysis. And as you can uh, have a look on the on the on the slide, the pictures uh, today, um, we we 
we think uh, the, the use of drone the, uh, can propose three times shorter for the transport of, uh, of sample than, uh, than car, because today uh, the, the hospital use, of course, car on the road when the road exists, of course. So it was the, the second part of the, of the presentation about the, the background and the subject of medical use. The, 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 the last part of our presentation is to propose you uh, uh, a co perhaps a, a collaboration, but at, at minimum a, a, a discussion. So um, about the, I, I, um, I agree to, to participate for, to, the, to, the, to the workshop of DRACMA. I, I begin to participate to, the, to this workshop, uh, I think at the beginning of the, of the summer, I think. Paul, I think, and it was very in interesting. And uh, you propose a, a lot of uh, uh, retakes and appearances uh, always on the, on the world. But um, if you if you um, if you uh, analyze, analyze this uh, for, for us, uh, uh, the context. So we can say that a, a lot of use cases. You, there is a lot of use uh, of use case in Dragma community. The problem as a, is the cost of about a, a cluster because our, our, our job is to to make a business, and so uh, solutions are developed uh, developed use case by use case, without uh, sometimes global coordination. In consequence, uh, I think there is no market for industrial and no commercial solution for user. So, for us, perhaps the objectives will be perhaps the for the next time capitalization and valorization of your experiences, return of experiences and valuation matrix, and perhaps create an industrial basis answering your needs to create a market opportunities. So, it's the, the subject of the of the, of the discussion. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, we 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 would. Uh, uh, we could uh, ident uh, identify uh, uh, common needs and the market opportunities on the different retex experiences you you had and you will have in the future. Reduction of the specification to 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 launch open call around drone cluster network, for example. Identification of, of, of solution that can answer to, the, to 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 needs or the global needs. Uh, uh, and uh, and perhaps uh, organize uh, some uh, some sourcing and, and demonstration of, of solution. So, if uh, on the next slide, on the next slide, so perhaps uh, a planning uh, proposal for the for this discussion uh, will be uh, um, in April uh, 2022. Uh, there is the the second uh, taken news day on safe cluster on safe drones uh, on Nice, so where we, you, you will be invited, of course, if you want. So we can uh, perhaps present presentation of the of this uh, project with uh, perhaps uh, in the 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 next month identification of use case and perhaps a specification uh, with the launch of open call on this specification in safe cluster and other drone cluster network in July and uh, presentation at the, at the end of the, the year uh, of the best solution and uh, perhaps uh, organization of a demonstration if it is uh, possible. Well, I think it's the last slide. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So it's, um, I, I hope you, you understand because my English is not very good. Excuse me for this. Um, I hope you, you, you understand my proposition and uh, perhaps uh, we can discuss about this if you want. Like this. So, so just, to, just to sort of summarize here, but it sounds a really exciting uh, proposition. So you're kind of suggesting that the, 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 the DRACMA group could get involved with your activities and, and, and see areas of collaboration and stuff. So I, I, I mean, I, I kind of 
I don't want to misrepresent the group and, and, and possibly we need to have a, 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 a sort of other, another conversation about it, but it, it sounds exciting. I would be very in favour of that. That's that sounds very good. I guess the thing that um, uh, and oh, Patrick's made a point made a point here. What is the attitude? It's was, it was, it got a, a really good question. I'll just finish up my my comment, I guess because everybody's e extremely busy. Once you've got the, the, an idea of the dates, perhaps we need to noodle a date between us or, or, or once your meeting is where the dates are, are sorted out, then I can start to circulate that to the members of the community to get them kind of involved kind of thing. But Patrick, do you want to ask your question? You, do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, hi there. Uh, thanks, you, Bill. That's, that was a great. And Laurel, thanks for the presentation. Yeah. Thank the you. question is uh, around the regulators. So in the previous talk and in previous sessions, we often talk about the CAA, the UK regulator, and there is frustration. What's your experience been in France with the regulator? Are they friendly? Are they hostile? Is it? Tell us a little bit about that world. Yesterday, yesterday I have a, a call with uh, Annelise. I, I think Annelise is uh, participating today to the, to the workshop. We speak uh, uh, about this. Uh, hello, Annelise. So um, we speak about about this in in, in France. The the regulatory is, uh, I think, uh, per, no, normally the same regulatory because uh, in, in in England you have a European regulatory uh, like France. I I think I understand. So, uh, but I think it's more stronger in France. It's difficult to to have the 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 authorization to to make some experiences and today of course uh, in, in urban or near urban area is very difficult so uh, our demonstration and the project casa the demonstration will be in a rural area uh, specific uh, between two establishment uh, of the hospital in the valley of the la roya when there is no no people no no population so in fact the, it will be possible to to realize a, a demonstration and a fly, but in, in in the in the for the future, of course, as I said, the aim is to use the the, the drones in urban area because it's it's uh, it's answer to the to the revolution of the street the the, re, the, organiz, the future organization of the hospital in france and in europe I, I think where there is some a lot of establishment and in fact every establishment have a, a specific laboratory with an a, a analysis uh, specification and in the future the i understand the hospital the they they they, they will uh, they they want they would excuse me uh, to to have just a specific uh, analysis on one side and just on one side. So of course, when you you have a a, a disease or a patient on, on on hospital when there is an operation and uh, the the analysis or the ex expertise is not on this establishment, you can uh, you can uh, try you can bring the, the the sample to the to the other. So you you have to be quickly. And today, uh, with the road and with the traffic, is very difficult. So, they, in the in the future, the the aim of the hospital is to have just one experience ex expertise on one side, and use uh, rapid uh, transport. And of course, uh, drone will be the best one. But today, the regulatory doesn't permit it, of course. Okay. Thank you. I've I've got a follow up point actually. I, I I was very pleased. There was a nice slide that you showed with your test facility, Hubert. Do Do you have any more details about that? I'm sure members in the community, you know, one or two of them are building things that need to be tested and that kind of thing. So, is it something where you can apply for a bit, a bit of time? Is it is it is it pay as you go? Is uh, is there something we could put to the members? So yes. is that is that up and running now? Or is, is so we have um, a test area with uh, about uh, five different uh, areas. So perhaps for our next uh, workshop of DRACMA, uh, I can invite the, um, the director of this uh, test area network, which is a, a, a specific company, a specific, uh, I don't know, um, Loa, as I um, can explain. Test, test centers. Test yes, test. it's a test center with a partnership with a SAFE. And so the the manager of this test center can 
can uh, present uh, could, could present this uh, this uh, offer in the in the next uh, drachma workshop for example and we can present all all the, the area and the services and perhaps the the cost i i i, I understand of course uh, an, an english company can can come in in, in south of france but it can give you an idea, and perhaps uh, if you if you want to develop the, or propose the same the same development in, in England, perhaps I don't know. Perhaps uh, this uh, this this type of test center can uh, uh, exist in exist in, in England. I don't know. Yeah, there are there are one or two in 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 the UK. I know of two, and there's probably more. There's there's the Cranfield site, and mm. there's and 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 there's Snowdonia as well, and and they've all got slightly different. Uh, challenges and benefits, uh, you know, or one near water, very rural, one kind of just about in the in the kind of semi-urban uh, area. But it, it, it does strike me then, there's, there's probably a good session that we could do around testing and test centre, perhaps invite yeah. other providers in for the community and and, 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 and and see what's required to get that relationship going yes. again. It, I think it's, it's really interesting to, to, to yeah. To exchange on the vision and yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the the work. So, so, so perhaps we should. I should organise. Patrick and I should organise a, a sort of a, a, a meeting around test centres and 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 and, and, and invites the, the the providers in. Excellent. So hold on. Um, we've got a a, a, a question here from uh, Ewan. Do you want to un, unmute yourself? Yep. Hi there. Um, Hi. Great presentation. Um, nice to listen to. Um, just a quick question. Following up, I think it was Patrick was talking about the regulators. So I think it's the DGAC who are the equivalent in France of what we have in the CAA here in the UK. So do you work alongside those guys or do you keep in contact with them regularly in order to find out where the regulations are now, how you understand the regulations and where they're going to be in future? Um, because I think the understanding of where it's going to be in the future is important for um, those companies and organisations who are going to be successful in their deployment of um, of drones going forward. I think yeah, you can answer, but I can start. Uh, like, <laughs> uh, like it's not that we we work with the DGAC. I don't know the term in English, but we have to work with uh, with them. It's a uh, it's mandatory that if we want to organize an experimentation or a demonstration, so it's a uh, the first requirement. We need to ask the DGAC what we can do. Is the so yeah, we work uh, day to day with them on this subject. And Uber, maybe you can, maybe uh, I said some mistakes, but I think it's yeah. that. <laughs> and uh, about the, the test center, the, the aim, but today um, it's difficult with the, the, uh, the aviation, the, the, the Ministry of Aviation and Transport. It's difficult, but the aim for us, perhaps, it, it was in the future, the different test area will be uh, Label, labelized? I don't know, uh, Loa? I don't know the yeah. Yeah, label. Yeah, it's uh, labelized, but I, I'm not sure yeah. it's really in English terms. It's a really yeah. old French term, so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, with a, with a, uh, uh, perhaps a, uh, a civil aviation label of the of the test area in the future. And uh, the, the solution will be tested in this uh, center. In fact, we will have the, the label, so it will be more, 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 less, less difficult for the for the company or the industrial to 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 develop and to and to to have the, the the agreement of the of the of the of the government for for this. It was the perhaps the, the future for for us uh, to have a, in fact a, a real partnership with the civil aviation and the, and the, and the, and the test center, but um, it's difficult today. Excellent, thank you. Um, Alex has got a got a question here. Do you want to unmute, unmute yourself, Alex, or, or would you like me to answer or ask the question? It's about local councils. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, hi Paul. Yeah, hi, hi there. It's um, it's just a question really from um, when you're engaging with, for example, a niece hospital. Is it just with the hospital? Have you engaged with a niece authority as well to understand how the council view these kinds of things? I mean, obviously we've got data from Oxfordshire, so I'm just keen to understand kind of 
when you're looking at these trials, how much do you bring the local stakeholders along, not just the medical community in these trials? No, it means uh, and, and, if I speak very, very quickly, it's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> if I understood well, if uh, is the question is if we work only with hospital, but uh, and maybe uh, with uh, maybe other authorities around hospital, not only yeah. hospital, if I understood well, yeah. Correct. So, Correct. Uh, yes. so, so yeah, Nice, uh, nice. Uber. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uber, if... Uh, That's nice. <laughs> If I'm not wrong, like we work with hospital, but also with local authority. Yeah. If we want to 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 work on demonstration, etc., it's not only with hospital. We have to work with authorities also. Yeah, I think many of us that have been involved with developing pilot studies, um, having the local engagement is really really important around safety and perception and the local communities accepting those kind of deliveries. So really important. Um, I think Charles has got an excellent question here. Charles, do you want to unmute? Or would you like me to? Ask? No, no, no. It's not. It's, yeah, it's, Charles, it's, it's, um, it's, it's not a question. It's, it's more of a statement. I, if 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 I got uh, the presenters right about the the the, the lab um, initially, I thought it was the lab about the drone carrying samples to a lab. But at some point, I think you are referring to um, a space where you have civil aviation allowing people to test their their drone technology. And I just wanted to highlight uh, that the government of Malawi and UNICEF in Malawi have. Um, it, it, a drone testing call you do since uh, 2017, I think, where people from all over the world um, <clears throat> welcome to come and test their their technologies until um, they are they are fine. I think it's uh, a diameter of over 80 kilometers where you can <clears throat> come and crush your drones as much as you as, <laughs> as you have to before you can <laughs> before you can you are confident to fly in the uh, public airspace. So I just wanted to also to to make that point. If that was the discussion about yeah. the, a location where you can test your technology. Charles, you've you've you be you, you're very dangerous there. You're you're I think you're volunteering yourself to to be, to be part of this test center uh, workshop that we're going to do. <laughs> it sounds fantastic. <laughs> I, I was aware of the Malawi one, and and I'm itching to get some uh, grant funding. Nice sounds fantastic, Hubert, but 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 Malawi, it, I, it's it, it's it's very tempting. So <laughs> it just depends on the funders, I think. Really, um, I think we've got. <laughs> okay. We've got one last question actually from of Vignesh. Would you like to un unmute yourself? Hi, good evening and uh, thank you and nice to meet everyone. I think it was a great presentation. So uh, more of a comment and, and also a brief question. So I just want to understand more about, uh, you know, the community sensitization part of it. So uh, we recently, uh, you know, concluded a vaccine delivery program in um, in the Indian state of Telangana. So it lasted for about a month. Uh, was fairly successful, largely incident free, if I may. And uh, we're looking to sort of graduate to the Himalayan belt. But uh, at least in, in, in this region, we looked at sort of sensitizing local communities and also interacting with the local police. So uh, just wanted to understand, uh, you know, more from your side, uh, what uh, kind of a role did that play? Uh, or, or are you looking to even, you know, bring together local communities to tell them about the benefits of drones? Is that uh, part of the uh, part of the uh, programming that you do? And uh, two is, you know, even when you, you know, test out drones and, you know, have these sandboxes, there is an initial, you know, catalytic cost that goes into it, you know, so how, how are you planning to unlock capital for the initial drone program? Thank you. Thank you. About the sensitizing, uh, um, of course, uh, but it will be the, the next step because it's just the beginning of the, of the, of the project. And uh, in fact, uh, the next year we, we, uh, we will begin the the first demonstration, the first flight on our, on, on this subject, and uh, uh, so of course we have to discuss with the, the acceptability of this uh, of this solution. Uh, drones sometimes drones uh, is difficult for the population, especially when you use drone for the security, for the control, for the surveillance. But for the for the, for the medical use, I think it will be uh, better to to for the acceptability of the population. So, in fact, for the for the next time of the project, for the second step, this subject of uh, of course uh, 
regulatory and acceptability and sensibility sensibilization of the, the population will be on the on the scope of the of the second step about the second question uh, Laura perhaps if you uh, can because yeah it was even that's a two false for me so <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was more around unlocking capital for these programs. So when you basically when you uh, take out when you test unproven or you know what people perceive as unproven technologies, there is this slight hesitance when it comes to funding. So just to sort of make that clear, uh, how how are you able to unlock capital for this program? Uh, uh, capital, you you speak about private funding or public funding? Like uh, what? Yeah, the question is what kind of uh, funding? Public funding. Yeah, it, yeah, it's more like uh, we use, yeah, we try to find like public fundings, but at French level, you know, we have only, it's a co-financing, like 50% and the enterprises uh, have to, to pay the other parts. So, so for the moment, it's only that, but you know, it's only for proof of concept at this stage. So we have like public funding for research and development projects. So that's the, the calls that we we submitted on the call. Thank you. For, for, for example, in the last month, we organized a, a three, three de demonstration of solution for user, uh, not specific on, on this subject, but subject of use drone for, for control, especially for an a big electricity company in France uh, uh, want to, to, to control, for, for example, for, for the produce electricity with the, with the river, when they open the dam and uh, they, they, uh, they need a lot of water in the, in the river uh, to produce electricity, there are some problems that they want to use drone to, to, to detect people in the river and alert them. So we organized a demonstration, like, like Laura explained at the beginning of the presentation, uh, writing the specification with the customer, sourcing solution in, in our network, sele selecting some uh, good solution, and organizing the, the demonstration on a specific area, on the factory, on the, on the, on the dam, a specific dam in, in the center of the France. And uh, we organized this demonstration uh, uh, two, two weeks ago. And, uh, and now uh, the, the company uh, in, in, the, in the future uh, will uh, buy the, 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 the best solution for, for, for it. And we organized uh, some demonstration on every subject. Uh, and and uh, the, for us, the, but for organize this, uh, in fact, uh, the, the, the market uh, must must exist, and of course, if the market exists, is that the regulatory for this exists too? So about this subject, uh, which is the in fact the, the, the global use of drone for delivery, not specifically in the medical, but delivery of goods. Today, the the, the regulator the, the regulation is doesn't exist. So it's it's just the beginning of the of the story. Uh, yes. Thank you. But in France, in France is this, perhaps in India, I don't, I don't know the regulatory. I, I think the regulatory piece is hard everywhere. Um, it's it's a very long process. Um, it changes quite frequently. And um, we, most groups are, are, haven't quite got there yet, I think. Or, um, but I've got one eye on the time. I, the, the conversation is absolutely fantastic, but I know we've all got many things to be getting on with. So sadly, I, I think I've got to bring the conversation to a close, but there's been some really great outputs. So I, I think one of the first meetings in the new year has got to be around testing sites. So so thank you, Hubert, that's great. And I think we've got top, middle and bottom, or even going from Orkney, Wales, London, Nice and Malawi. So it, it, it's geographically, it's a, it's a really nice story. I'll have to think about trying to get enough time for everybody. It, it may be a, a little bit of speed dating where where we or, or, or even set up a panel where we can give everybody, you know, five minutes to present their testing sites and then get those people into a panel to feel a field some group questions because there's probably some nice themes that come up. But I'll try and devise something there. But um, but anyway, I just want to say thank you very much to to all three speakers, uh, Laura, Hubert and Thomas. It was absolutely fantastic. And the, and, and the people asking the questions, a really nice discussion. So thank you very much for that. Um, and then, uh, Hubert, I, I think in the next week or two, perhaps we should get back and think about some of the, 
the opportunities that you've mentioned towards the end of your 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 presentation. So we'll try. Oh, and we've got the European Space Centre that's just come in as well. <laughs> well, you space. To, so I, I think it's becoming a slightly larger session because we've got to get everybody there. But I'll try and sort that out in terms of getting smaller presentations than a panel to speak. So um, thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye now. I'm going to stop the recording. Bye. Thank you very much. And